Good evening, church members who are here and those who are tuning in live. Welcome on a on a Friday night, Friday evening. Sorry. So um, let's uh, rise onto our feet before we go into praise and worship, which is Christmas carols. Okay, let's just. Silence, let's just calm ourselves. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, you are here. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day, Lord God. Thank you for bringing us here together, Lord. For those who are tuning in online and those who are physically here, Lord, you have given us this opportunity another year to celebrate Christmas despite the disasters that has happened over the week Lord Lord as we give the next few hours onto you Lord let all our worries disappear our stress anxiety anything that is negative and it's not from you be gone Lord Jesus as we take this time into singing Christmas carols let us be filled with energy to praise your holy name in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. For the first few songs, let's clap our hands and praise God. Amen. It's good to be back to church. It's Christmas. The angels are singing. And I know the reason. Savior is born. It's Christmas. The bells are ringing, and I feel like shouting joy to the world. Away in a manger, no. Oh 
to the world the Lord has come. Let earth receive a king. Let every heart repair him room. And in heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven.
shining It is the night Of our dear Savior's birth Long lay the world In sin and never pining Till he so felt its worth a thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn
Savior. We thank you as we remember the birth of Jesus today. We thank you, Lord, that it is an important event of God, Father. And it's a very and most important event of this time of God, Father. And we know God, Father, because Jesus is born and the world has been redeemed from all the sin and shame. And that, Lord, we can stand holy and righteous in your presence because of Jesus. It's so important, oh God, Father, as we remember this celebration of Christmas, that we will remain alone to know the true meaning of Christmas is to celebrate and to welcome Jesus Christ into our hearts. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity. We praise you and thank you. For this time, Lord, we commit the whole service into your beautiful hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And everybody may be seated. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Are you all good? Praise the Lord. I can't see any smiling faces like as usual many years ago in Christmas time. <laughs> okay. Many years ago. It's already two years. We are wearing a mask. And um, praise God that we are here again. Amen. It's God's faithfulness that we are here. All good and well, even in the time of pandemic. We have marched through it for the last two years. And we are all okay. Amen? And that's another reason to celebrate and praise the Lord for the goodness. I'm here to give you the announcement. And uh, for those who are at home, once again, welcome to Evangel Church. It's a privilege. It's a great news. It's a Friday. And some of you are working, and some of you just finished working. Somebody might be on the way. Uh, so we pray that we will all be okay to celebrate this uh, Christmas Eve. So for the first announcement, there will not be any Sunday service on this Sunday. So we are having the service today, right? So you have the whole of Saturday, the whole of Sunday for yourself. <laughs> okay? You can do a lot of things. There are a lot of volunteers needed in the flood prone area. So it's a good time. If you are not doing anything, make yourself available to somewhere, you know, there's a plenty of places where they need help. We can do something. And uh, some, some members, are, I heard, they're going to the Gudwara temple to prepare and help to prepare the food for the flood victims. It's a very good thing. 
Praise the Lord. All right? So use this time wisely. Days are pretty dangerous. As we are traveling around, always ask God for wisdom that we are at the right place at the right time. Okay? And continue to remember those who have been affected by the flood and uh, do our best to help and encourage them. It's, 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 it is a big thing. Okay, Friday prayer meeting uh, for next week will be on, all right, at 9 o'clock through Zoom to stay tuned in for that. And there will be a New Year service on the 2nd of January, 2022. Let's get used to pronounce 2022 and write the number 2022 when you sign your check. Okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. 2021 is going to bye-bye soon. That's about it for the uh, simple announcement. And uh, before I pass the mic to the next person, uh, we have an event. Praise God for that. Um, I'd like to just call upon the church to a uh, short prayer for our nation as we remember those who are affected by the flood. Father God, we thank you and we remember, God, all our friends who have been affected by this terrible flood happened all over our Malaysia and even across in the Philippines, uh, the big wave that has hit them too. We pray especially for our Malaysian brothers and sisters who are in difficult times right now. Lord, we, we have questions why this thing has to happen. But Lord, even more importantly, we want to give thanks to you for many have been saved miraculously. Unfortunately, some have lost their lives. Our heart goes out to them. We pray for the family, for comforting hand upon you, from you, Lord, upon them. And Lord, we pray for the authorities, especially the government, who has been under severe pressure, God, for the performance that has been not good. But we pray that we learn our lessons of God. We pray for people to come forward to lead us out of this calamity of God. We pray for the days ahead that the, the waters will subside thoroughly and people will be able to pick up the things and restore their lives, O oh God, Father. We pray for your favor, O oh God, that it will not rain heavy anymore that there will be sunshine as the people go about to do the cleaning up of God, Father. And also your protection upon everyone, that they will remain free from all kind of sickness or disease of God, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your hand upon Malaysia and everyone of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. We are celebrating Christmas. It's a joyous moment. All right? So like we have a special... Uh, it's actually a surprise even I myself don't know what's happening. Uh, so I would like to pass this time to Brother Ben and the team right now.
through the children performance, which is a victory song. So, and I believe that uh, we, me and the kids will just be practicing it all the while. And, <laughs> and when this came, uh, we had to, you know, do something just to entertain the kids and to entertain you. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.
Raise the lawn. That was good. They have put up, uh, put a lot of effort. If they have spent a lot of hours practicing for this performance, and thanks to brother De Ben, Benjamin, and his two children. Vera and Chris. I've not seen Vera for a long, long, long time. <laughs> she's actually she's a baby from Evangel Church. Okay, so she has grown up so tall and so nice. Very good. Let's give them another round of applause. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we would like to also introduce that Brother Ben is able to uh, teach children, and uh, we will encourage if you have your friends with small children. To bring them along, that uh, he he will be able to minister, all right, to to teach them Sunday school things. So that's something new that we look forward in 2022. Praise the Lord. So let's uh, get ready to give unto the Lord this more this evening uh, our tithe and offering. Praise God. Let's pray for the tithe and offering. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us wonderfully throughout 2021. And the Lord, we can look back and say, God, you have been truly wonderful. You are so awesome, God, to take care of each and every one of us, God, Father. Lord, we also know that even when the times that we didn't remember you, you were there, Lord, working out a way out for every one of us in our difficult times. And Lord, this evening we come before you and we want to thank you for this privilege to give our tithe and our offerings before you. We thank you that you have blessed each and every one of us. And you also pray for those who are having difficult times in their income. We pray for your blessings. We thank you for your blessings and for your victory, O God. We pray you and thank you and commit this tithe and offering for the furtherance of your kingdom alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, as the offering back is going around. So now it's time to listen to the Christmas message. Okay, so we praise God for Pastor Raymond uh, here with us and like to pass this time to Reverend Raymond. A very good evening to each and every one of you. Not, not loud enough. What? Okay, sorry. Trying to get a cue from them. Okay. Okay. A very good evening and a blessed Christmas to each and every one of you. It's good to see... All of you all in church um, this evening, some of you are seeing for the first time, um, and uh, we'd like to welcome you. If you're the first time here in, in Evangel, we'd like to welcome you, and thank you for being here this evening. Friends, before we go into the Word today, um, there's a lot of relief work that is going on at this moment, and people need help, and uh, let's bow our heads as we pray at this time for the work that is going on. Heavenly Father, dear Lord Jesus, Father, you know the catastrophe that has hit our nation in such a great magnitude. Father, at this time, we pray for all the relief work that is going on. 
and all the donations and people that have sacrificed their time and energy and their money in the midst of difficulties of God, help that is going to help the flood victims. We pray at this time, Lord, that you will assist them. You will be with them. We pray for your will to be done. We pray, Lord, that you will help those people come out of this calamity. We pray and ask for your help. We pray for your strength to be with them. We pray also, Lord, that there will, that there will be no spread of diseases, O oh God, that is brought about by this situation like cholera and typhoid. We pray for your great and mighty protection. We pray for your blessings upon your people and every religious group of people who are working together. We thank you, Lord, in this relief effort, we see, Lord, people of various races and various religions coming together hand in hand, putting aside the differences and political beliefs and background, Lord, and helping one another. Father, we know that this is a difficult time, but we also see the goodness of humanity in this, and we pray and we pray for your help upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, before I share with you all the word of the Lord this evening, can I request you to kindly stand with me at this time and turn your Bibles, if you brought it with you, turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, from verses 18 to 23. And we will read these verses together. If you don't have a Bible with you, you can also look at it online or look at the at the PowerPoint in front of you. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. We'll read it together in whichever language Bible that is found before you. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said to the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we commit this time into the hands. Father, I pray that you will be with me as I proclaim your word and your children as they receive your word. Lord, we pray for all those who are present here physically and those who are watching us online, live through Facebook, and also through other means later. We pray, Lord, that you will speak to us. You will minister unto us. Wash us, cleanse us, cover us. Fill us with your glory and the power of your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Now, this topic that I'm going to share with you all today, the hope of Christmas from Manasseh to Ephraim. I was supposed to share this topic on the first Sunday of December, the first Sunday in Advent. That was on the 5th of December. But the Spirit of God stopped me from doing so. I sent this topic to Marissa at that point of time. But um, then I changed it uh, to a different topic. And I never knew why until this point of time where the Lord wanted me to preach on this topic today. The hope of Christmas from Manasseh to Ephraim. Friends, Christmas this year, Christmas 2021, is a devastating Christmas to many people in this country. The year 2020 and 2021 has indeed been a very difficult year for many in this nation and also around the world. Last year, 2020, started with a scare and the rise of COVID-19. 
on March 18 of last year, the nation was declared into a national lockdown. MCO was declared. For the first time in history, we were not allowed to gather in church. Most of our churches and other religious institutions were closed down. Many activities and social gatherings were also stopped. Even travel was restricted. Who could expect that a simple flu-like sickness would turn out to be such a catastrophical pandemic? While the nation is still recovering from this pandemic, Malaysia and also other parts of the world is struck with another catastrophe, the floods that just happened just a few days back. Torrential rain caused floods to rise in many states and many places that has resulted in the loss of life and damages to property. Now, Floods in Malaysia are common during this time of the year. But Malaysia has never experienced such a mayhem of this magnitude. But my friends, in the midst of this pain, many are in pain. If you look at the YouTube, you look at TikTok, you look at all the social medias, you will see people in tears, people in anger, people in frustration because of what has happened to them and their belongings and their loved ones. In the midst of this pain, loss, in this Christmas, it is a difficult time for us to enjoy Christmas in the manner that we used to at one time. But Christmas is a time, this is a period of time where Christians and also non-Christians celebrate the birthday of a very special person. Whether you are a believer, whether you are an unbeliever, whether for religious reasons, for meaningful reasons or commercial reasons, people all over the world celebrate Christmas. Even in Arab, they started to celebrate Christmas, where shops uh, and towns are open for Christmas. He is the only one, Jesus is the only one who has been given the title King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and God of Gods. Let me reiterate that. The birthday of the person whom we are celebrating now, he is the only one who is, who is given the title King of Kings. Lord of Lords and God of Gods. No one else is qualified to claim these titles. No one else can even come close to these titles. That means Christmas is a very special time because it is a time in history somewhere around 3 or 4 BC. 3 or 4 BC, the God who dwells in the heavens the God who resides in the heavens took the form of man and was born as a human being to dwell with humanity. That is why he is called Emmanuel, which means God with us. We just read that, Matthew 1, 23. This year Christmas, my friends, if you would place your trust and hope in Emmanuel, then your life will turn from Manasseh to Ephraim. Now, what is Manasseh to Ephraim? If you have your Bibles with you, kindly turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 41. Genesis 41. Now, we are all familiar with the story of Joseph in the book of Genesis. Many Bible teachers would equate the life of Joseph in the Old Testament to the life of Christ in the New Testament, as Joseph had a lot of similarities to the life of Christ. Just like 
Christ, Joseph was a man of sorrow. He was betrayed by his very own brothers, just like Christ was betrayed by his very own disciple and his own people, the Jews. Joseph was misunderstood by his brothers, just like Jesus was misunderstood by the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Joseph's dream was misinterpreted, just as Jesus' preaching and teachings were misinterpreted. With lies, deceit, treachery, and false testimony, Joseph was sent to prison. Jesus was also sent to the cross the same way with the lies, deceit, treachery, and false testimony. Joseph lost his favor and popularity because of jealousy. And Jesus also lost his favor and popularity because of the jealousy of the Jews. But you and I know the story does not end there. At the appointed time, at God's appointed time, Joseph, who had no way out, was brought out of the prison. He who was in the dungeon was now asked to shave and put on new clothings, and he appeared before the king. And he was made the prime minister of Egypt by the order of the king, known as Pharaoh. The prison bars and the accusations against him could not hold him in prison because God was with him. That is what the word of God tells us. In all his problems, God was with Joseph. And Jesus Christ resurrected from the grave in the same way. Death and the grave could not hold him because God was with him. Now, when Joseph came out of prison, a wife was given to him by Pharaoh. And two sons were born to him. And Joseph, very prophetically, listen very carefully, very prophetically gave both his sons very significant and prophetic name. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 41. Genesis 41, verses 51 and 52. Genesis 41, verses 51 and 52. Before the years of famine came, before the trouble and the problem came, two sons were born to Joseph by Esena, daughter of Potiphera, priest of On. Verse 51, Joseph named his, first, his firstborn, I mean his elder son, Manasseh, and said, this was the meaning of the, of the name that he gave his son, it is because God has made me forget all my troubles and all my father's household. My friends, in your current situation, if you would not look at your current circumstances and look up towards heaven, towards Jesus, whose birthday we are celebrating, then Manasseh will first come into your life. What does Manasseh mean? Verse 51, Joseph said, God has made me forget all my trouble, all my pain. Today, many, many in the world are in pain, in sorrow. The financial loss and the loss of life because of COVID-19, not only here, but globally. And things, things are starting to recover. And now, the loss caused by the floods, massive loss, massive loss. Loss or even that, it, that is difficult to recover. Joseph said, he named his son Manasseh, God has made me forget all my trouble. Pain, forget all my pain. And all my father's household, that was also pleasure. He had pleasure in his father's household. He was the favorite son of his father. But God has made me forget the pain and the pleasure of the past. Friends, in the past, 
we may have lot of ple- had a lot of pleasure. That's good. A lot of things we enjoyed. At the same time, we also experience a lot of pain and difficulties. And some of us find it very difficult to forget the past. But my friends, this year, before we step into the new year, in the Christmas of this year, you will need to forget the pain and also the pleasure of the past. Some of us find it difficult, but we need to move on in life. We need to move on in life and we need to have manasseh, that is to forget the pain of the past. Remember this, Jesus is not only a God of the past, but he's also a God of the future. He is not only the God of yesterday, of the pain and the trouble and the loss of yesterday, but he is also the God of your future. Remember, he is the one who said in the book of Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you. That means you do not know the plans that he has for you. But I know the plans I have for you. That is good. And to prosper you and not to do any harm. If you have a Bible with you, please turn with me. The book of Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 to 19. Isaiah 43, verses 18 to 19. This is the word of the Lord. Forget the former things, whether good or bad. Forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. You know, some people will sit down and dwell in the past. You know, at one time, during my days, when I was young, in 2000. And 10, some will go even further, in 1948, do not live in the old, the glory of the old days. Forget the former things, do not dwell in the past. If not, God cannot bless you, you cannot move forward. Verse 19, Isaiah 43, 19. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am, I am making a way in the wilderness. What seems to be you, to you like a wilderness right now. What you see, there is no way. God said, I am opening the doors. I am making the way. What seems like a wilderness? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. People never, not expect to see streams in the wasteland. But he said, I will make streams in the wasteland because that is the power of God. That is the power of the person whose birthday we are celebrating. His name is Jesus Christ. As believers, this is the message you and I are to offer to those who are overwhelmed with pain and sorrow and loss and the tragedies of 2020 and 2021. We are to look at Emmanuel. For your current situation is not your destiny. It doesn't matter whatever your loss has been or how great your loss has been. But remember this, your current circumstances, your current situation, no matter how hopeless it is, it is is not your destiny. Your destiny is in Emmanuel. Your destiny is in Jesus Christ because he was born. He was born for you very specifically very specially for you he had you in mind even before the creation of the world he had you in mind even before you were formed in your mother's womb he had you in mind before the troubles and the problems and the calamities that has come upon you let it be to you let it be to your loved one let it be to your family member let it be to your friends or relatives he is Emmanuel for you and all whom you love My friends, this is our first prophetic step as we prepare to enter the year 2022, as we prepare to usher in the new year. It is what Paul said in the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 13. Forgetting the past, I press toward the things of the future. Forgetting the past, I press towards the things of the future. Then, my friends, Joseph had another son, a second son. And this is what he named his second son. Verse 52. Genesis 41, verse 52. Then Joseph named his second son Ephraim and said, 
it is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. My friends, please underline both these names, Manasseh and Ephraim in your Bible. And this is what he said. The second son, he named Ephraim and said, it is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. He didn't, God didn't take me anywhere, but in the place where I am suffering, in the place where I am tormented, in the place where I am humiliated, in the place where I thought there was no hope, God has made me fruitful. This is very significant. Joseph, by giving his sons these names, he decreed and declared that God, and it was not Pharaoh, though Pharaoh it was Pharaoh who Pharaoh summoned him out of prison. It was Pharaoh who made him the prime minister of Egypt and gave him the power and authority next to him. But yet, Joseph said, it is God that has made me fruitful. Now, men and circumstances tried to destroy him in prison. His brothers threw him, threw him in the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites. Potiphar, Potiphar threw him into prison. God tried to destroy him. Sorry, men tried to destroy him. Circumstances tried to destroy him. But God made him fruitful in the land of his trouble, in the midst of his suffering. This is the confidence and trust that you and I need to have in God when we go through and face hopeless and difficult situations. This is what the word of God tells us. Please turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 8, verses 37 and 39. A verse that is familiar to all of us. Romans chapter 8, verses 37 and to 39. This is what Paul says. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. It's not easy to say that, you know. When you have lost everything. When you are in a hopeless situation. When you are in humiliation, when you are in great difficulty, like Joseph was, like Jesus was, like Paul was. In all these things, we are more than conquerors, conquerors because of the faith in the person whom we have. We are more than conquerors to him who loved us. Verse 38, he says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. My friends, no matter how horrible, how difficult, how bleak your circumstances may be, how hopeless your circumstances be, you could be suffering a breakup, you would be suffering a situation of great financial loss or sickness. In whatever hopeless situation, always remember this. God loves you. Jesus loves you. He is Emmanuel, God with us in no matter what the circumstances are. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Joseph was a man of sorrow. But in all his circumstances, in the pit and in the prison, Joseph knew nothing but God is with him. And God's love for him brought him into the palace. Friends, as we celebrate Christmas this year, you and I must intentionally, let me repeat that again. You and I must intentionally leave the past behind. Leave the pain behind. Leave the sorrow behind. Leave, leave the humiliation behind. And even some of the joys you had, leave it in the past. Only then you can embrace the future. Do not, do not dwell in the past. If anyone comes and tells you, talks to you, or sings to you a sad song, in those days, at one time, you'll tell them, get thee behind me, Satan. Because neither will they move forward Neither will they allow you to move forward. The past was good. Praise God. The past was bad. Also praise God. But I'm a man who's looking towards the front. Towards the future. For your life and ministry belongs to Jesus. Not to your circumstances. Nobody, nobody can write your history except God. 
Nobody can write your story. You know, nowadays we all like to put our story in Facebook, our story in our status. Nobody can write your story except God. You and I need to put our hope and place in God. Yes, we may have made mistakes in the past. Today people are blaming one another for, the, for what has happened. Some say it is this reason. For that reason, I can't mention it because we are going on life. No matter whether is it human error that has caused all this, or is it climate change that has caused all this, or the situation, or what was engineered in Wuhan laboratory, it doesn't matter. What is important is, my friends, your life and destiny, your future, your ministry is in the hands of Christ. You do not alter your destiny. People do not alter your destiny. Yes, they will try to alter your destiny like what they tried to do to Joseph. But God can turn what was meant for evil for good. We have to step prophetically into the future, into 2022. Emmanuel is the God of the future. Prophetic promise for the new year. If there is a prophetic promise for the new year, from God to you, then this is God's word to you this morning. This is God's prophetic promise to you this evening. I will do new things for you. Turn around to the person next to you and tell them, the Lord has told us this evening that he will do new things for us. He will do new things for us. The person next to you may look unconvincing or have a hopeless uh, face. Doesn't matter. This is God's promise to you. I will do new things for you. You want to hashtag that with somebody? Go ahead and do it. He has a new beginning for you because he is God. He is God of the season. Now, how do we move from Manasseh to Ephraim, from, from the former things to the new things that God has for us? Remember these four things. Number one, it is your life of sanctification. Sanctify your life from the sins of the past, the mistakes of the past. Sanctification is very young. What is sanctification? Make yourself holy. Your, it is your sanctification. Number two is your life of prayer. Yesterday, a man came to see me for prayers and I prayed for him. But when I prayed for him, I saw there was nothing there. No prayer, no Bible reading. And I told a person who introduced him to me, I said, this man has got nothing. It's zero. But he said, but he wants people to pray. Yes, but you will need to pray. You will need to rise up early in the morning and seek the face of the Lord every day. It is your life of sanctification, your prayer, your Bible reading, your belief in the, and trust in God. If you do not read his word, how are you going to believe in his word? It is our life of sanctification, prayer, belief, and trust in God. Today will produce your blessings for tomorrow. Let me repeat that again. It is your life of sanctification, prayer, belief, and trust in God. Today will produce the blessings for tomorrow. People say, the power of tomorrow comes from the fasting and prayer today. Now, watch and see the drama. Watch and see the dreams and the plans of God to unfold in your life. Isaiah 42 verse 9. This is what God says. Isaiah 42 verse 9. See the former things have taken place and the new things I declare before they spring into being, I announce them to you. You see the former things that have taken place and the new things I declare before the spring into being, I announce them to you. My friends, in closing, I want to tell you this. Remember, it's Christmas. You and I are celebrating the birth of the King of Kings, the one who holds your, your life in his hands, who holds your future and your destiny in his hands. Do not be caught up with what is happening and look towards what is coming with the eyes of faith and trust. Do not look at a situation, but look at the one who loves you and was, for, and was born for you on Christmas Day. Let us bow our heads and look to the Lord in prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we give you honor, glory, power, and praises. We thank you, Lord, for Christmas. We thank you, Lord, that you are called Emmanuel, God with us. Father, we pray, Lord, just like Joseph named his first son Manasseh, for God has made me forget the pain of my past. And named his second son Ephraim, for the Lord has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. Lord, in my pain, in my suffering, you are going to bless me. Lord, we pray this message of Christmas, not only for ourselves, but all those all over Malaysia who are suffering and in pain. We pray right now, God, that you will move them from Manasseh to Ephraim and the season and the joy of Christmas will bring good news to all. Lord, the meteorology department has warned, has announced of further fierce winds and hurricanes in the next few days, so God. Lord, we pray that you will, you will stop this from taking place. For we put our hope and trust in you. And prophetically, we step into the new year that God is doing something new for me. God is doing great and mighty things for me. Thank you, God, for listening to us. Thank you, God, for answering our prayers. Thank you for your holy presence who is here with us this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, shall we all rise for the closing prayer and benediction? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the year 2021. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness and your faithfulness in our life throughout this year. Many people who are alive in the beginning of this year are not around now, Lord. But you have sustained us. You have strengthened us. You have, provi you have provided for us. And you have brought us this time to celebrate your birth. And you're going to see us into the new year. We commit our nation. We commit our family. We commit our church into the hands. We commit our lives into the hands. For you are our destiny and our plans and our future is in your hands. We pray, Lord, that you will bless us. We know that nothing in this world is uncertain, but you and your word is eternal. We pray, Father, that you will speak and minister unto us. We leave this century to celebrate your birth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The benediction. And now may the love of the Father... The grace of the Son and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Let us join together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom comes. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us unto temptation, but it is from evil. For thy is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, as we remain standing, let us join the special choir as we sing a few wonderful Christmas carols to celebrate the birth of Christ. Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Pospero año, Felicidad. Clap your hands, everyone. Feliz Navidad, para papá, Feliz Navidad, para papá, Feliz Navidad. Prospero and your felicidad. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of our heart. Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas.
Jesus from the bottom of my heart. Feliz Navidad, para pa pa pa. Feliz Navidad, para pa pa pa. Feliz Navidad, prospero año, felicidad. Feliz Navidad, para pa pa pa. Feliz Navidad, prospero año, felicidad. We wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. We wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Praise the Lord.